Hi, and welcome to the Sequoia Spotlight. I'm Kamal Fisher, your host. With me today, I have founder and CEO of Night Food Holdings, Mr. Sean Folkson, with the OTC ticker NGTF. Welcome, Sean. Hey, Carmel. Happy to be here. Excellent having you. As a start, tell us what Night Food Holdings does. Well, Night Food is a snack company that focuses on the nighttime snack occasion. Uh, most people out there do snack at night. Uh, it's over 80% of Americans, and the most popular choices are cookies, chips, candy, and of course, ice cream. And the reason for that is we're, we're biologically hardwired to crave excess calories at night. So there's a lot of people out there snacking at night. They're making unhealthy choices, which is actually sleep disruptive. And so we solve that nighttime snacking problem for people so they can still snack at night if that's what they choose to do, but do it in a better and healthier way. Also sleep friendly. That's what we're all about. Wonderful. So I think you're answering my next question, which is what does set night food apart from any other healthy snack out there that can be enjoyed at any time of day? Yeah, so and and, and that's a great point. So over the last 10, 15 years, there's uh, so many healthy snack companies that have popped up and, they, and they've stolen billions of dollars in market share from the legacy brands. And what that shows us is that people do want healthier choices. We know that. But the interesting thing is almost half of all snacking takes place at night. And so if, if something is supposed to be healthier for you and you're going to be eating it, you know, in an hour or two before you go to sleep, it really should uh, take sleep quality into effect. But no other snack brand does that. We're the only ones. So the other brands that are out there, it's true, they might be healthier in terms of things like sugar and fat and calories and protein and fiber. But we do it, everything we do is done through the lens of, um, you know, we've got a lot of sleep doctors and sleep experts on our team. If you had a patient and you know they're going to snack at night, right, and you know they're going to eat ice cream at night, what should that ice cream be? What should it have more of? What should it have less of? So it's not just about being healthier. It's being healthier in a very specific way. And that's what we call sleep friendly. Wonderful. So obviously, this must have been inspired by some personal story, and I'm curious to know if that story is yours. Yes, the story is mine, and uh, um, I am a notorious nighttime snacker, and, uh, you know, it's it was a long time ago, and I, I realized, you know, I started trying to eat healthier. I used to, you know, when I was younger, I would work out a lot. I would eat anything at, at all, any hour of the day, and uh, but then as I got older, it, it started, you know, wearing on me and I realized I wasn't sleeping as well and I was gaining weight. And so as I started to try to eat healthier, uh, I noticed that uh, it was it was easier to do uh, earlier in the day. And at night, I was just uh, really out of control. I felt out of control at times, like a like a like a werewolf when that moon comes out, um, you know, you transform and you lose control. And so at the time, I remember looking to see, you know, what should you eat if you're going to snack at night? And I wanted to buy products that I could keep in the house because all I had was energy bars, you know, workout bars and stuff like that. And I remember looking and there, there were a lot of articles. There were articles from individual sleep experts. There were articles from, you know, the Mayo Clinic and, uh, you know, the National Sleep Foundation. And they all had similar information about what you should and shouldn't eat at night, but there were no products. And um, I know that for myself, if there was a product, I would have bought it right then and there. And, you know, I spoke to some other people and it seemed to be a problem for, for a lot of people, not just me. Now, all the stats I have today, I can tell you, I can reel off all the stats about how much is spent and what people are eating. We didn't know all that stuff back then when I started the company, but I did know that this was a problem for a lot of people and it was a huge opportunity. We started it on that and on that faith. And then over the years, you know, there's been all the medical research that's done, uh, consumer behavioral research about what they're consuming at night. And, um, you know, that's that's really built the case for what we're doing. But we didn't have it when we started. I just knew it was a problem for me. Wonderful. So um, in terms of your distribution model, what current growth drivers are you deploying to make sure your products are getting into the right people's hands? Well, we're focused really on two things, and 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 one is the 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 main one, and really, I won't say the only one, but it's it's the main one. It's one, two, three, and four, and then the other one will be five. So hotels, 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 hotels. We are focused on hotels. We know that in the supermarket space, which we've tried in the past, it's really hard to compete with a new brand. Um, you know, our ice cream pints are sitting there. 
you know, we've got a few different slots and, you know, there's 500 in a supermarket. There's, there's 500 different pints of ice cream, you know, Ben and Jerry's has 50 SKUs and hog nuts, and we really couldn't compete there effectively. What we found when we started rolling into hotels, it's a much different environment. There's a lot less selection. It's curated. The hotels are putting night food in for one reason. Hotels are in the sleep business. They've got an obligation to help people sleep better. They've spent billions of dollars over the last 10, 15 years upgrading their beds, uh, you know, mattresses, pillows, linens, blackout curtains, white noise machines. And then when that guest, you know, walks and as soon as they walk out of that guest room into the lobby shop, it's like most hotels, they don't even care anymore. All you see is Twizzlers and Klondike bars and flaming Hot Cheetos. And and it's, you know, it's it's not just that when a hotel does that, that they're not just being helpful for the guest. But it's that selection of snacks that you typically see in hotels. It it actively undermines the investment that the hotel made in better sleep because now they're giving their guests a bunch of things to choose from that are all sleep disruptive. So you spend so much money to help this person sleep better, and then when they when they choose between the Twizzlers and the Cheetos and the Klondike bars, now you're you're moving backwards. So in that hotel space, hotels are putting us in because they know they have this obligation to help people sleep better. They're not necessarily getting rid of all the other stuff. They're just putting night food in so that those people that care have a choice. And what we're seeing is night food is selling really well compared to uh, these other snacks. We've got data that shows that we are outselling Ben and Jerry's in in lots of hotels. We're outselling uh, Hagen Dazs, and now we're launching cookies. So we're focused on hotels. That's where the brand is going to be built. And most importantly, there's a category coming. We know how many people are snacking at night. We know that they're eating junk. And all the big food and beverage companies know it too. And they know that there's billions of dollars at stake. So we believe once we prove out this category, once we're able to build in the hotels, these snack companies will see that consumers do care. And then they'll have to come in. And ultimately, we believe we're building a billion-dollar category. And I mentioned there's one, two, three, and four, and that's hotels. And then there's a fifth. The other one is airlines, right? Airlines like hotels have a vested interest in how well people uh, that are in their trust, how well those people can rest on those overnight flights. You you fly internationally, you're going to get dinner, whether you're in first class or coach, you get dinner, you get a dessert. And what we're doing is we're talking to some of the international carriers about giving people night food snacks instead of whatever cheesecake or, or, or chocolate mousse or whatever they might be giving. So those are ways to get the products sold. It's high margin uh, revenue typically. And we're really excited about, uh, again, but it's primarily hotels. There's 56,000 of them out there. It's a lot more hotels than there are supermarkets. And we're really able to compete there with super high margins. Exciting stuff. So just for my curiosity, does this include kids and pregnant women as potential consumers? Yeah. So that's the thing. So that we're not trying to solve the sleep problem. We're solving this snack problem. So our products don't contain any drugs. There's no sleep aids. There's no melatonin, which is a hormone that a lot of people, and I agree, should you know, kids should not be having that, nor should pregnant women. And so we're focused on nutritional foundation for better sleep. So it's safe for anybody, uh, you know, unless you have a very specific food allergy. It's safe. It's not going to put you to sleep if you happen to have some night food for, you know, uh, after lunch. Uh, that's not the goal. The goal is for those people who are snacking at night to have something that's food, but formulated to help with sleep. And that typically means less sugar, less fat, fewer calories, more protein, more prebiotic fiber, which is really helpful. For example, our ice cream has a lot more tryptophan than other ice creams do, Um you know, and we're working. So we've got now we've got ice cream that, that's been launched. We've got cookies that's been launched. So our ice cream is in hundreds of hotels across the country. We're in lots of the biggest hotel chains, select locations, you know, Courtyard by Marriott, Fairfield Inn, Residence Inn, Holiday Inn, Holiday Inn Express, Hyatt Place, Sinesta. So we're, we're working with some of these large hotel companies to work on uh, rollouts across entire chains. Um, and again, there's 56,000 hotels. That distribution started in May. Our cookies just launched a couple months ago. We just manufactured our first run. And our goal is to introduce chips and single-serve ice cream novelties 
coming up here in 2023. And so that when somebody walks into that hotel lobby shop, if they're looking for chips, they'll find the night food chips right next to the Cheetos. If they're looking for ice cream, they'll find our pints right next to Hagen does. If they're looking for cookies right next to the Oreos, there's the night food. And that's what we think the hotels want. That's what's been communicated to us. And it's important to us that it's not just for, you know, people of a certain age or a certain gender, men, women, children of all ages, night food is, is formulated for anybody who wants that snack within that hour or two before bed. And then the choice is yours, right? Well, when it's it. presented, the choice is yours. So you mentioned the chains of hotels. Obviously, this can culminate in crossing of international borders. Yes. Uh, does that, that obviously that's part of the plan. And how is that distribution looking? Are we making headway outside of the US borders? Well, we're not really so so the focus is on the US right now. Um, we have actually had some discussions overseas, but that's not the focus. You know, the, the interesting thing is even years ago when 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 um earlier in the company's history, we we were uh focusing a little bit on hotels, and what we found was that. Most hotels at that time did not have lobby shops or or marketplaces. And, you know, over the last five years or so, I don't know if you've noticed it, but it's become a much more important feature of the hotels, especially with when COVID hit and there were not a lot of restaurants, a lot of hotels that had restaurants shut down. It became a much more important piece. So you won't see very many new hotels being built without that marketplace with the freezer, right, with the fridge. They have the drinks. Um, it didn't used to be like that. So overseas, in, in most other countries, in Europe, and I've, I've been to hotels in Europe, they don't have these marketplaces yet. And so it's not really a viable channel, even if we wanted to go there. So the hotel companies we're talking to are international in their brands, but our focus is on U.S.-based distribution right now. Got it. What is the vision for 2023, and how do you foresee night food uh, taking over the market, really, in this healthy snack, nighttime food? Yeah. So, so, you know, there's, there's what I, I, I perceive there's a tipping point that's coming in the hotel industry. Again, there's 56,000 hotels. We're in a few hundred of them right now. Um, but the tipping point is going to come when we get into uh, a certain number of hotels and chains, and we're able to start talking about the chains that we're in and putting pressure on the other hotels that don't have sleep friendly snacks. All of these companies, there's five hotels in the U.S., five uh, hotel companies that control almost half of those 56,000 properties. There's Choice Hotels, there's um, um, Hilton, Marriott, uh, Wyndham, and Intercontinental. Those five companies control almost half of the of the 56,000 hotels. And you know we're we're working directly with a few of those companies right now at the highest levels. We're already in one chain. We're going to be rolling into um, um, some others and some things that we think we're going to be able to announce really soon. And at some point, the the chains that do not have night food will perceive a problem. And that problem is that guests are starting to expect it. These are the, all these companies are publicly traded, and they've invested, like I mentioned, billions. Uh, they've got directors. They've got shareholders. There's no way from the front desk to the CEO. It's very hard to justify having all of these, I'll call them junk snacks, in the lobby shop without having sleep friendly. You're in the sleep business. So we think that early, hopefully in 2023, these, these um, hotel companies are going to start to feel pressure that if they don't add night food and if they don't add sleep friendly snacks, they're going to start to fall behind. And that's our focus. We want to push that. We want to push the industry. Once that happens, boom, there's going to be a ton of uptake and a ton of really rapid growth for us. That's the way we see 2023 playing out. Wonderful. And I think that's a great way to round up our conversation. Thank you, Sean. This is the Sequoia Spotlight. Stay tuned for more.